My name is Mike Hernandez, and I'm just a regular dude who is passionate for adventure. Come along with me as I share my experiences and lessons I learn along the way. Oh, as long as it's in a Jeep. Oh, and one more thing. Family isn't an important thing, it's everything. Ooh, welcome to the channel, family. As always, I am your host, Mike Hernandez. Today, we're taking a little bit of a different turn in some of the content that you're used to. I just got back from a five day to week long trip with uh, Land Rover, uh, Andy History Channel, and my bros over at uh, Overland Journal. And you know, I got home, kind of looked at the temperatures and the shift um, when I was up on the uh, rim of the Grand Canyon, the North Rim, and also in Kanab, Utah. You know, we spent we spent every night, you know, in our tents, somewhere around 32, 35 degrees, which was awesome. Usually here in the valley, we're not there yet. Um, which brings me to why I am going to do this video for you guys today. So uh, in the valley in Arizona, we've had the last week of about 90 to 96 degrees. Um, and it's gonna be, hopefully, Lord willing, the final phase of the heat here in the valley. So what does that mean? That means that we get to start planting, we start you know, seeding, um, all the farms are shifting and they're starting to grow everything underground because we're about to have a pretty good differential change in temperature. So you can even hear my neighbors are also working on their backyards at this time. So what I did is I planted sod, I got some borders through about 15 tons of rock. We're almost done with the sod, got a few corners and a few other rolls to do. Here's one of the complete planters, raised bed planters that I'm working on. Essentially what you're looking at is an eight foot uh, two by six and a two foot two by six stacked three of them on top of each other. And then I got these really great, <laughs> I got these really great um, paver style, wow, paver style corners for them. You can stick rebar through them and cement them. Right now this is just a temporary solution that I wanna see how it works. Again, I'm not an expert on any of this stuff, uh, but I am trying to learn to be a little more self-sufficient. Obviously what I'm gonna start planning is some of our produce. But I just wanted to take you along and see kind of how we prep here. You guys know, you know, the Gladiator, the home, and even your EDC are all part of a completely uh, prepared unit. So what I'm working on today is my safe haven, which is my home. Um, I already have the, you can see in the holes over here, I already have, you know, the dripper system in, clocks already established, which I'll show you too. This is already running on a timer because um, when you lay them down, they need con pretty consistent water. Um, you know, the house sits on just under half an acre. I'm like 0.44 acres. You can see here, this one is completely done with the dripper system and it's already programmed. I just need to start planting. So again, eight foot sections for the front three, rear three, two foot sections for the sides. And then on the base, what I'm working on is my topsoil because I also have 12 plants that I'm gonna put along the wall. Uh, one of the things that wifey had um, was an expectation that you know, she wanted the house to be pretty, inviting, you know, so part of that is also some of the aesthetic pieces, which you can see here with a stream light system. The wall is a hundred feet long. You can see end to end a hundred feet. So I got two 48 foot sections and they covered it in or filled this space in really nicely. Oh, it just fell. What the freak? <laughs> so, <laughs> so I had to drill some holes. Um, just got some masonry uh, drill bits slash concrete drill bits and then also got some anchors you can see here that are also for masonry slash concrete those went in anchored all the lights in and they do a really good job of giving me some extra light at night so i got one planter done that one just needs the sprinklers and this one is completely not even assembled i just have it mocked up to show the space in the yard where i want it to go because like i said i have 12 plants coming on monday um, which is two shade trees and a bunch of other really great stuff that I'm going to add. So I wanted to show the, the, the raised beds first um, and then kind of walk you through the process of some of the stuff that we're using. Um, why? And also kind of show you this is my entry level into, you know, the homesteader slash gardening 
kind of lifestyle stuff that we do. It's not just all about Jeeps or firearms. Uh, we also want to be more prepared in every aspect. So let's get started. I do have each four corners already installed. Um, just checking them to make sure they're level, which they are. Everything looks really great. So I have the bottom portions of them in there just as guides. So we can go ahead and start uh, filling them in. Yeah, boy. All right, let's do it. So we got all four corners, all the planks in. Now it's time for some uh, raised bed soil. What's up? I get to live. That's it. this one um, but as we were completing this one they delivered the majority of our plants which are deer grass gardenias what's beautiful about the gardenias is have a white flower so it'll contrast really nicely with the dark green leaves um, the brown mulch and then when the grass is done the grass uh, I also was able to get some of my veggies in and cilantro and stuff like that you guys know that Cilantro is a staple for what we do in terms of our food, but gardenias, deer grass, purple grass at the end. So I just kind of put them in their designated spots for now, and then I still got oak trees coming there and over there. So you can see the sun's going down, which is part of the reason why. We're going to wrap up today with this. Um, I'm creating my topsoil layer because when you're gardening and planting stuff, uh, that's what's really going to make the difference. I also have some fertilizer to feed the plants that we're planting there but the oak tree should give us a nice microclimate um, and this is kind of the stuff that I'm learning so I'm just passing it on to you we can create this shade barrier up top it'll create a microclimate um, between the shade and the floor and then we can we can grow tropicals like banana pe oh <laughs> we can grow little Mikey's in there we can do banana trees and whatnot and some other really cool tropicals underneath them once we get that shade established over time uh, but in the meantime, like I said, we can start doing, those are tomatoes. I got peppers in there, some really great stuff, some uh, sage, rosemary, I think. Um, and then this one needs a couple more bags, and then I'll finish the sprinklers. 
So that's it for today. And uh, we'll continue again on Monday when the rest of my stuff gets here. Oh, welcome back fam. We're probably around day four or five of this project. Um, it wasn't just the planters like I'm showing you guys today. It was the rest of the backyard. Let me see if I can get centered here. I uh, got all the trees, plants, lights, planters, raised beds, um, topsoil, which is just a layer of mulch installed and everything is running and operating the way it should. So what I'm gonna do now is show you some of the stuff that I was able to obtain. Um, you'll see here that I did have a little bit of an issue getting some of this stuff from Lowe's. Everything you guys see here today was uh, purchased from Lowe's. Um, and it's not, it's not that they didn't have stock, it's more that I think a lot of people right now, especially in my community we live, you know, where there's a bunch of uh, farms and ranches, um, are, are going this direction because like I said, the, the temperatures are just right. So I am kind of competing with everybody else and they're planning and this is some of the stuff that I, I could acquire and I am going to continue to do more. But in order to finish this video, I just want to show you guys what I got now and what I'm planning now. I have a bunch of peppers that I'm going to do first, some cilantro, um, some romaine lettuce, and that'll be here in this first one. These are really nice because you can just, just peel it, get a mist, you soak them, or it's just... This guy out here. So same kind of. There we go. Garden salsa. sprinklers on this guy I have everything I need got a couple of strawberries oh, those should be pretty good over here I have some better boy hybrid tomatoes they are already established should be pretty easy to kind of just get them in there the sprinklers are already done in the center planter um, so that's gonna be pretty neat you can plant these here in Arizona like I said in fall uh, slash winter because of the way that our temperatures are I just kind of have to monitor them uh, in, in the colder winter nights that they don't freeze over and then here you can see uh, the garden that you watch me plant or the raised bed has three sets of peppers. It has cilantro, it has rosemary, and then I do need to get more romaine lettuce because I want this whole end um, to be with lettuce. One other cool thing about it is I have it set up over here on the left side of the yard because I do plan on doing a gazebo kitchen, outdoor kitchen, and um, I'd like to just kind of come over here and grab the stuff that I'm cooking with. One, one thing about tomatoes also is they don't play well with others. They are very hungry. So um, when I set this up, I did intend on only having tomatoes in here because um, because of the demand on the soil and on the fertilizer, uh, I wouldn't be able to put anything else other than tomatoes in here with them. And these three guys may compete. I'm just going to have to keep up on fertilizing them and make sure that they're taken care of. But that's how these uh, planters are going to get set up. So that brings us to the conclusion of this episode, family. Thanks again for uh, following along this long. If you like this stuff, let me know in the comments. Like, subscribe, tell your friends. Again, I always say this, but we're seeing pretty steady growth. I appreciate you guys in this community, the preparedness community off-road, and everything that kind of flows into each other. So we're gonna do more stuff like this. I'll continue to show you the progress of it. I'll get an update video here within the next few months so you can see how everything's established. But again, guys, thanks again. Like, subscribe, tell your friends, and I'll catch you on the next one.